There are loads of reasons why you might consider going electric with your next car. Perhaps it's the idea of no tailpipe emissions and doing your bit for the environment, or maybe a smaller tax bill appeals. Or it could just be the simplicity of enjoying an electric drive. But let's be honest here. Most of these conversations end up concluding with one question. How much is a switch to electric actually going to cost? Well, I'm glad you asked because I'm here today with this Hyundai Ionic to shed a bit more light on how much it really costs to run an electric car and crucially, how much you can save. Oh yes, we do like a bargain. If you're a buy one, get one free kind of person at the supermarket like I am, then make sure you stay watching. In this video, we'll be looking at three main areas where a switch to electric could save you some cold hard cash. That's fuel, maintenance and tax. We'll start with fuel, which is where you can make some serious savings. I'll try to keep it as simple as possible because it can get a little bit complicated. So our Ionic here has a 38 kilowatt hour battery pack with an official range of 193 miles. It's quite easy to work out the cost of charging if you know how much you're paying per kilowatt hour for your electricity. Now, if you don't have a clue, don't worry, nor did I, but all you have to do is look at your last electricity bill and it will be on there. Right, time to do some maths. Channel our inner Carol Vorderman and get out the calculator. So the average cost per unit of electricity, that is the kilowatt hours in the UK at the moment, is just over 16 pence. So. The cost of fully charging our Ionic from empty to full on a home charger will be 16p times 38 because it's a 38 kilowatt battery. And that means, ah, it costs us six pounds and eight P. Okay, so six pounds and eight P will get us 193 miles of juice. And if you're willing to do a bit of legwork with your electricity supply, which I would recommend because you can sometimes do a bit better than that, your supplier might offer cheap rate nighttime electricity, which means the unit costs can drop as low as 5p per unit. So if we do the sums again, 5p times 38, that equals £1.90. I mean, that is amazing. That is basically a penny a mile. It's a bargain. And don't worry about having to go outside at two in the morning in your PJs because most electric cars can be programmed to start charging when that low rate kicks in. So what we really want to know, of course, is how does that compare to a conventional petrol or diesel car? Well, officially, according to the RAC Foundation, the average new diesel car in the UK at the moment returns 57.9 miles per gallon. So. At the time of filming, the average cost of a gallon of diesel is five pounds and 39 pence. So if I do a little bit of number crunching up here, we have discovered that the average cost of diesel is nine pence per mile, which is actually quite a lot more. If you did 12,000 miles a year, a diesel car would cost you around 1,120 pounds in fuel, while an EV like the Ionic could be as little as 120 pounds. That's nearly a thousand pounds less, which is almost enough to pay for my new front garden. So from one money saver to another, we are now talking about maintenance. Electric cars, they might sound like they're more complicated than conventional cars, but that's actually not the case at all. Most electric cars, just like this Hyundai Ionic, has far fewer moving parts than a petrol or a diesel car. The motor itself only has about 20 components compared to hundreds in an internal combustion engine. There's also no oil to change. There's no oil filters to replace. And there is certainly no exhaust to fall off and hit the coach behind you on the M6. Thankfully, that will not happen again. And because all electric cars recycle the car's braking energy to refill the battery, the brake discs and pads will last a lot longer than they would in a petrol or a diesel car. And as a result, you'll be paying far less for servicing and have to replace fewer parts as you go along. Now, if like me, you used to dread the DVLA road tax brown envelope landing on your doormat every six months, well, you'll be pleased to learn that the lovely people from Swansea will only bring you good news when you switch to electric. That's because all fully electric cars are now completely exempt from road fund license charges. 
And if your employer provides you with an EV as a company car, then there is more good news incoming. As of April 2020, the benefit in kind tax rate for electric cars has been reduced to zero. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. So where's the catch? Well, OK, here is the less good news. It won't have escaped your attention that electric cars generally cost more to buy than their petrol or diesel equivalents. The silver lining to this particular cloud is that the market for electric cars is growing, and it's growing fast, with more and more manufacturers bringing out new cars. As volumes go up, the cost of their technology comes down, and that means electric cars will soon reach a point where they cost the same as their petrol and diesel counterparts. They also hold their value better, which means you'll either lose less money when you come to sell, or you'll find your leasing or finance costs are gonna be lower. Now, as we've explained, the potential savings of switching to electric can be significant. From fuel costs to road tax, a switch to electric can potentially save you thousands of pounds every year. And if you multiply those savings over a few years of ownership, well, you'll end up with enough cash to, I don't know, buy another electric car or go on a really nice holiday.